All right, so looking at order of operations and complex numbers out of All right, so we're talking about squaring your fractions or applying an exponent to your fractions. So you're just going to, here we have 2 fifths squared. That means you're going to square the top and square the bottom. You can do it individually. So that means you're looking at 2 squared and 5 squared. So your answer would be 4 over 25. The bottom one, or the one under it, you have negative 2 fifths squared. So it's negative 2 fifths times negative 2 fifths. Negative times negative is positive, so that would be a positive 4 over 25. So make sure you're careful with this scenario versus the next scenario that we're going to talk about. Um, notice the parentheses involved. So we have in that one we just did, we have the negative inside of the parentheses. In this next one, we have negative two-fifths squared, but the there's no parentheses at all. So what's being squared here is two-fifths, not negative two-fifths. The negative is not being affected at all by the square. So you have a negative 4 25ths. So this negative is just sitting on the outside all the way to the end, never affected by the square. If you want the exponent to affect um, your signs, then you have to complete, uh, include them as a part of your parentheses, inside of your parentheses. And we have negative one fourth times negative one fourth times negative one fourth. Negative times the negative is positive, but it still leaves one there. So that's negative one times one times one, which is one. Four times four times four, 64. All right, any questions on those before we move to the next one? All right, I think I heard something pop up. Okay, cool. All right, so let's add a little more to it. Let's go. Negative two fifteenths times three fourths squared. I don't forget PEMDAS. I believe we talked about it in this class already, but I want to make sure parentheses come first. So that's what we're going to do. What's inside of our parentheses first? So when I look at, I rewrite these. I'm looking at 15, that's 3 times 5. That 4 is 2 times 2. So 
So I can cancel out twos that's in common. Cancel out the threes that are in common. What's up top, or what's left up top is negative one times three, which is negative three. And on bottom, five times two, which is 10. Oh, sorry about that. I left that three there. That three is not there any longer. That three canceled out. So it should have just been one times one up top. So negative one times one. So I should have negative one over 10. Sorry about that. Now can uh square top and bottom negative one squared is positive one, ten squared is one hundred. That would be the answer. All right, next one, we have 1 half plus 3 and 3 fifths times negative 10 over 9. First thing we want to do is convert this to an improper fraction. So that's 3 times 5 plus 3. Over 5. Plus one half plus more five three times five is fifteen plus three is eighteen. So, PEMDAS, multiplication is next before I do, go to my addition. If I rewrite that, it's 2 times 9 for my 18, 5, that negative 10 is 2 times 5. And then at nine, nines cancel, fives cancel. So that leaves me with four over one, uh, negative four over one. So I had two times negative two on top left. Then on bottom I just had ones left. So all right, I think there was a hand, but then it went away. So does someone have a question? Feel free to unmute. Right. No, I answered it in my okay. no question. All right, sounds good. Sounds good. All right, so let me go back. All right, so we have 1 half minus 4 over 1. So we need a common denominator. Remember, we cannot add or subtract fractions without common denominators. So we look and see that we can turn the denominators into twos. We already have one as a two in that first fraction, and then turn that denominator in the second fraction to two, multiplying it by top and bottom by two. One half minus eight over two, and we'll finish it off with it being negative seven over two.
All right, so they want us to evaluate two divided by y times z when y is equal to negative 14 over 3 and z is equal to negative 1 over 3. So the first thing we'll do is plug in the values accordingly in which negative 14 over 3 will be substituted in for y and negative 1 over 3 substitute in for z all right so that first is just two if you want to write it as a fraction that would be two over one don't forget when you're dividing you have to multiply by the reciprocal so whatever fraction immediately follows the divisional sign needs to be uh, flipped and the division changes the multiplication. So that'd be negative three over four. And the next one, negative oh, one over three, that stays the same. Now the next step, just gonna write out the breakdown just to make sure is okay with what I'm doing and why I'm about to do it. So that 14 is 2 times 7. So when I go to cancel out before I multiply, I can cancel out those 2s, cancel out the 3s. So when I look at what I have left um, up top, also negative times a negative is a positive, so those cancel out. So on top, I have 1 times 1 times 1, which is just 1. On bottom, 1 times 7 um, times 1. There was only 1 left back here. So that would just be 7. So 1 7 is my answer. And don't forget if I ever uh, move too fast or scroll up and you're still copying some, please let me know. I can scroll down. I can wait. Um, I can't see anybody. So um, I will be dependent upon you guys letting me know what you need. So I have, oh, I heard something. I uh, see a hand. What you got? Yeah, now I have a question. Okay, so. Um I'm sorry, why didn't, again, like, did we cancel out the two? You said why did we or didn't we or what did you? Why, why did we cancel out the two? Oh, because we had a two that's in our numerator right here and then there's two that's in our denominator. So we can cancel out, like, we can cancel out like that, like? Yes. On, okay, thank you. But if, now, yeah, no problem. Now, it only happens like that when you're doing multiplication. So this whole problem was multiplication, so that's why I could cancel out across. Okay, know. because I thought like because of the parentheses, it was gonna like cancel. Like you couldn't do like the same operation. Oh, oh no! Parentheses are just uh, grouping symbols. Just uh, the only thing that stops you from doing stuff like that is if you have, let's say, two times x plus five or something you know if it's something funky going on inside the parentheses and you have to simplify what's inside first then mm -hmm. that may be preventative um but no if you're just talking about fractions and it's all multiplication so you can't do it when you're adding subtracting or dividing um dividing like we showed is going to turn into oh didn't mean to do that Hold up. Okay, there we go. So dividing is going to turn into the uh, multiplication at some point. So once you turn it to multiplication, then you can do it. But okay. multiplication has to be what is going on before you can cancel out. 
you know, anything. Yep. Okay, thank you. Not a problem. All right. So here we get uh, the next thing in this section, last thing in this section, complex fractions. So whenever you have more than one fraction going on, you have uh, multiple fractions embedded in, in the pro problem or process, then it's considered complex. So what I mean by that is that a fraction is three-fifths. This is a fraction right here. M over 10, M over 10 is a fraction. Then the whole thing is a third fraction. So you have three different fractions going on here. That's why it's considered complex. All right. And so there are a couple ways of simplifying complex fractions. The first way is if, notice we have here one whole fraction over one whole fraction. If that's the case, you recognize that this divisional bar is the same thing as your divisional sign. So this problem is written vertically. I can rewrite it horizontally. So those two symbols are the same. And now I can change it to multiplication. Flip my M over uh, 10 to 10 over 10. And then simplify. 10 is 2 times 5, so those 5s will cancel. Now I can multiply across. 3 times 2 is 6, and that 5 canceled out, so all you're left with is 1, so 1 times M is M. All right, problem before we look at the next one. The other way of handling complex fractions is by multiplying each numerator by the LCD. Right, so LCD talking about com not complex, at least combinator for each denominator that you see. So we're only looking at five, three, and a five. LCD is going to be fifteen. That's the smallest number that five and three can divide into evenly. And we're going to multiply each numerator by the 15. So whether it has a denominator or not, you're going to multiply each numerator by the LCD. And when you simplify this 5, well, each denominator should be able to divide into the LCD. So the 5 goes into 15, leaves you with 3. 3 goes into 15, leaves you with 5. 5 goes into 15, leaves you with 3. So now when you multiply, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 5 times 1, which is 5. 15 times 1 is 15, and then 3 times 3 is 9.
You can finish it off. 6 minus 5 is 1. 15 minus 9, 6. That's your answer. All right, let's do one more. All right, so we have three tenths minus one half over two plus one fifth. We got LCD, smallest number that 10, two and five can divide into evenly and it is 10. Once again, just reiterating the idea that if you, let's say if you saw 20, it would not be the worst thing in the world. As long as 10, two and five can divide into the 20, you're still fine. You're still in a safe place. Just uh, you will have to reduce at the end. But the main thing is to have a number that each one of your denominators couldn't divide into evenly. Yes, Ms. James? Um, I have a question about, remember when you said about the division sign and how you mm -hmm. can change it to um, basically just division? So why can't we just handle the numerator and then handle the denominator and then do the keep change flip? You can. Remember I said it was a couple ways of doing it? Yeah. So that first way um, was when you have one solid fraction over one solid fraction. So if you want to go back, or not go back, but go to this and change this by subtraction, go ahead and subtract those, combine it, and make it one solid fraction. Then do this, make it one solid fraction. Then uh, you most definitely can do that. Just got to make sure you find your common denominator and uh, for both of them individually uh, and then go from there. So, yeah, that'll work. Oh, I have one more question. Mm hmm So will it make it harder? If Which way is easier for me? To, to me, I feel like this way is easier because I feel like um, you're adding more steps. Uh, and you give yourself a chance, more of a chance to uh, make a mistake. But a lot of times in math, it's not about what I think. It's just about where your mind is headed at that moment. Like if that's what you saw, then that would probably be the easiest route for you at that moment. You know what I mean? Like, you know, what yeah. I mean? if that's where your flow is right now, then I would say go with where your flow is, because that that would be the most easiest for you. And, uh, and, th and that's letting you know where your best comprehension lies. You know, so yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. All right, so let's multiply each fraction, each numerator by that 10. So we have 10 times 3 over 10, 10 times 1 over 2, 10 times 2, then 10 times 1 over 5. Tens cancel. 2 cancels into the 10, leave you with 5. 5 cancels into the 10, leave you with 2. So in that first one, that's 1 times 3, which is 3. 5 times 1, which is 5, 10 times 2, 20, 2 times 1, 2. Three minus 5 is negative 2, 20 plus 20, uh, plus 2, excuse me, is 22. Then we can reduce this down because 22 is 2 times 11.
Choose cancel. Final answer is negative one over 11. All right, any questions before we look at a few problems in All right, so we're looking at solving equations containing fractions. I thought we touched on this. Just going back looking what you guys are writing. Addition, subtraction, fractions. Hmm. Must be thinking about another class then. Two point five. I see he did. All right, I'll worry about it. Okay, so let's look at solving equations containing fractions. I lost my page. All right. All right, so I want to solve for x. I want to get x by itself. So I need to perform the opposite operation. In order to undo what's being done. All right, so we have x minus 3 tenths. So I need to add 3 tenths in order to get rid of it. So add 3 tenths. Also, when I look at my equal sign, that splits up my equation. Right side of my equal sign, left side of my equal sign. So if I add 3 tenths to the left side, in order for it to be able to cancel out, I need to add 3 tenths to the right side as well. So 3 tenths and negative 3 tenths will cancel, leaving me with x. Then on the right, I need to uh, get my common denominators. Can't add or subtract fractions without common denominator. My common, my common denominator between the 20 and the 10 would be 20. So you ask yourself what times 10 will give me 20, and that'll be 2. So that's 6 over 10. Remember, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So if I say I'm going to multiply 10 times 2 to get 20, I have to also multiply 3 times 2 in order to keep my equivalency. That's why that 3 over 10 turns into 6 over 10. I say 6 over 10. Sorry about that. It should be 6 over 20. And now I can add them. 9 over 20 plus 6 over 20 it's going to be 15 over 20 
Then that can reduce because you have three times five is 15. Four times five is 20. Five cancel. That leaves me with three fourths for my answer. All right, negative five fourths equal to one half plus y. Once again, your goal is to get your variable by itself. You're adding one half to y, so we're gonna have to subtract. The one half. So right side of my equation leaves me with just y. Now on the left side, looking at the LCD of four. So I'm gonna multiply top and bottom of the negative one half by two. So I'm looking at negative five fourths plus nope. Oh, well, I could get a plus, but it matter. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it a plus plus negative two over four. And the result is negative seven over four. All right, so for the next one, we have four fifths X equal to two sevenths. So we wanna get X by itself once again, we have four fifths times X this time. So in order to remove that four fifths off of X, what we can do is multiply the reciprocal. And that's just a fraction flip. And remember, whatever you do to the right side, you have to do to the left side as well. So we're multiplying both sides by five fourths. So we see what happens on that left side. Five times four is 20, four times five is 20, 20 over 20 will cancel. Or you can just do five over five will cancel. Four over four will cancel. Either way, you're left with just X.
here. Four is two times two. So your twos will cancel. So on top, you will have five. On bottom, two times seven is 14. All right, so when we look at the next one, as well, two more, I guess, two. Uh, yep. So um, we're almost finished. So when we look at the next type, um, we could um, do what we've done up to this point, just work the problem out with the fractions involved. Um, or we can do what we call clearing out the fractions. All right, so we can clear out our fractions. If we want to do that, first thing we would do is find the LCD. LCD for this problem, and we're basing it on the denominators that we see. LCD is 12. What's the smallest number that 4, 3, and 6 can divide into evenly? So that would be 12. And this process is going to be very similar to what we did with complex fractions. We're going to multiply each numerator by the AD. So it's 12 times 3x over 4 minus 12 times 1 over 3 equal to 12 times 5 over 6. So next we can simplify. Four goes into 12, leaves you with three. Three goes into 12, leaves you with four. Six goes into 12, leaves you with two. So three times three X is nine X. Four times one is four. And then two times five is 10. Any questions so far? All right, so now we can solve the equation without fractions. First thing we'll do is add four to both sides. Four cancels on the left. 
9x is equal to 14. So to get the 9 off of x, we'll divide both sides by 9. x is equal to 14 over 9. That's your answer. All right, questions before we do another one. All right, so here we have y over 8 plus 3 over 2 equal to y over 4. We're going to try clearing out our fractions again. Our LCD is going to be 8. So what's the smallest number that 8, 2, and 4 can divide into evenly? And that will be 8. Multiply that 8. Reader. All right, so 8 divides into 8, leaves you with just 1. 2 divides into 8, leaves you with 4. 4 divides into 8, and leaves you with 2. So the result is y plus 12 equal to 2y. All right, so here, to finish it off, notice I have y in two different places. I need all of my terms with y on one side, all of my terms without y to the other side. So I would subtract y from both sides of my equation, both sides of my equation. Y is canceled on the left. Answer is y equal to 12. I didn't mention this before, but don't forget, y is the same thing as 1y, x is the same thing as 1x, the same thing as 1a, and so on. So when you don't see anything sitting in front of your variable, they assume you know that there is a 1 there. So when I did 2y minus y, that was actually 2y minus 1y. And so that's why I have one by left. So any variable sitting alone, just assume you know that there's one in front of it. All right. Questions? Anybody? Questions? Concerns? Comments? Oh, what did I do? Okay, there we go. All right, that's good, that's good, that's no. So this is what we'll do. Um, that is it for chapter four.
So next section, yeah, chapter five is five one. So we will get into that on next class. I will open up the floor for questions first, though. Um, if anybody have any questions on anything out of chapter four, and feel free to bring it to class on that day, and we can talk about it, uh, which is next class on Thursday. We can talk about it and we do that first. But if no one has anything, I'm gonna assume you guys are good, um, and we'll go from there. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stay back. If not, um, you guys have a good one. Be safe, and I will see you on Thursday. Thank you. You too. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. All right. You too. Somebody's hand, all right. Somebody's hand is up. Miss Millen. I, mm -hmm. I was late to class. Um, I emailed you, but I just wanted to let you know that I've been here for like attendance and stuff. Okay. Okay. That's great. Uh, I appreciate it, and I will check that email, respond to you, and you know, um, I will, you know, I've been recording this, so I'll shoot that email out to you guys as well, that video link. So, yeah, thank yeah. you. Not a problem, not a problem. All right, if everybody's good, I will see you on next class.